multi-angle fashion shoot agent. What does it do? Let me show you. One shot. That's all you need. Watch the match. Let's proceed. Yeah. Hello, one pit. Watch it transform. Yeah. Kind of sheep rooting up a storm. Yeah. Agent working, doing all that heavy lifting. Frame extracted. Now the vision shifting. Grid up poses. Each one looking clean. Looking clean. Best photo shoot. Pretty cool, right? This agent eliminates tedious manual work from video creation. No editing software needed, no endless prompt engineering. Just input an image and your preferences to get exactly what you want. You're giving the grid to see what your video will look like and you can make any changes before you commit to extracting each of those images in high quality. Then it generates the videos using those images and finally you can ask the agent to speed up the video since Kling tends to generate in slow motion and it puts it all together into a finished product. All it needs is an image of the subject and some of your input to get exactly what you want. We're gonna go through some examples and walk through the process from start to finish. Let's get right into it. All right, so here we are in our multi-angle fashion shoot agent, and I will put a link in the description for you to access this so you can find it easily. And we're gonna go ahead and start by clicking on let's get started. By the way, throughout this video, I am using a dictating app, which allows me to speak instead of type in what I want to communicate to the agent. But that's a separate app that I use that is called Whisper. One of the first things this agent asks for is a reference image, and that's an image of your subject, a person. So try to find an image of a person. If you have one, if you generated one, go ahead and bring that, and you're gonna drag it into the chat. And I have an image that I wanna use, so let me bring that here. This is the reference image I will be using. I thought the outfit looks really cool and just stands out for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that image into the chat and press enter. So next it's asking us if we wanna generate the contact sheet already, or if we wanna see the shot list first. If you choose the shot list, it's gonna give you a list of each frame and the description of what's gonna be in each frame. So at that point you can read through it and you can make any changes that you want before you generate the contact sheet. What I personally like to do is create the contact sheet first so that I can see what each frame is gonna look like and then ask it to make changes after. I'm gonna go ahead and click on just generate the contact sheet. All right, here is the contact sheet and let's take a closer look. I think it looks really good. Uh, my favorite are definitely this one and this one. This one's a little bit awkward. I don't really like it as much. So I'm gonna ask the agent to change frame one, two, three, four, five. Since there's no close-up shots and any of these images, I'm gonna go ahead and do a close-up shot for frame five. Now I'm going to ask the agent for frame five, can you do an extreme close-up on her face? All right, it did it, really nice. And actually, image two, I don't, I'm not really excited about image two. Maybe, maybe I can have her jumping. That would be kind of cool. All right, I really like this. However, I would like to change frame two now. Can you have her jumping up pretty high up in the air? And let's see what it does now. All right, yeah, that looks sick. I like it. All right. Let's go ahead and roll with that. Perfect, proceed to extraction. So now what it's doing is analyzing each one of these frames and it's generating each one of them individually at a higher resolution, as you can see right here. And if I were to open one of these to see how clean it looks, check this out. So good, so, so good. Now that's done and I can choose to convert these to 16 by nine or nine by 16 or four by five, or I can just keep them as one by one. So I do wanna convert these to nine by 16. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose convert to different aspect ratio. Now it's asking me which one would I like. I'm gonna choose nine by 16. Once you get the contact sheet, you can ask it to convert it to a 16 by nine or a nine by 16 before it starts generating these. So that is an option for you too. That way you don't have to spend credits on these extra images. All right, we got our nine by 16 images and we can go ahead and make video transitions with clean 2.5. Now we have the option if we wanna sequence the clips, like if we wanna go from one to two, two to three, three to four, five to six, right? Or you can do custom pairing. I personally like sequential, so we're gonna roll with that. Now I'm gonna add an additional instruction which is I want this video to loop. So I want frame six at the end, I want that to go back to one so that this video can loop. It's also asking me how long I want each clip to be. I'm gonna choose five seconds because that's really what you want. You want these 
really quick camera movements. And even then it's gonna be pretty slow, but we're gonna be able to speed it up later. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose sequential clips and five seconds. Actually, I stopped it because I needed to ask it to generate frame six to one at the end so that it can loop. Also, I want this video to loop. So I want there to be an additional generation from frame six to frame one at the end. All right, it's done the videos for us and we can always preview them if we like. Cool, <laughs> let's see. All right, so now uh, it's asking if you want to speed it up and I'm going to say I want to speed it up and I also want to attach the clips together. So go ahead and speed it up by 35% and then stitch them together. All right, and now I'm going to wait for it to do that for me. All right, the video's done. Let's go ahead and check it out. Let's make it full screen and let's play it. Nice. <laughs> That's a cool pose right there. Taking a knee. <laughs> the zoom in. Oh, nice. I like that one. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, I think I would even want it a little bit faster because the movements are not too crazy. Can you speed it up by 20%? All right, so now it should be a little bit faster. Yeah, it's a little faster now. I think I would want it even even slightly faster. When I click on here, this little quotation mark, it puts the link down here so it knows which video I'm talking about. Let's go back to this one again and let's do another 35%. All right, so this is 35% faster. Yeah, you can feel a lot more movement. I feel like if I were to add music, it would definitely feel better. Yeah, I like it at this speed. I think this is a good speed right here. So sped up the original clips. They were five seconds long and I sped it up by 35%. I made it around three seconds long for each clip. And then after the fact, I added uh, another 35%, which made it go as fast as you see it there. Another thing to keep in mind with this agent is that you can give it a little bit more direction when it comes to what happens in between the first and last frame. If you want something that's a little bit more interesting, a little bit more movement, you can give it that direction. So I'm going to show you an example of what I'm talking about. In this example, I told the agent, I want her to be dancing. I want her to do a backflip at some point. So when I told it to do that, this is what it gave me. Check this out. As you can see, way more movement and <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy now how different it looks. The backflip. Yes, it's just way, way more interesting, right? But of course, you may not always want something like this. You might want something that's a lot more chill, not <laughs> backflips and spinning around. This is just a way to go about it if you want to try this. All right, so the next one I'm going to try is a little bit interesting because it's not really something that looks like a human is like a fishbowl, but like with the, with the body. So I'm going to try this to see if it works. If it doesn't, we'll try a different image, but let's just try this. This is my reference image. <laughs> All right. I already finished this video, but I want to break down some of the issues I encountered and how I was able to fix those issues. So first thing is this contact sheet is actually great. I really like it. The biggest issue I had with this is that they're all close-ups and I wanted some wide shots in there too. And I understand the reason why it didn't give me any wider shots. If we look at our reference image, what is it showing? It's only showing the head. It's only showing the upper part of the body, right? So that's why that is what I'm getting here. So what I tried to do is I try to give it some more direction on what I want the body to look like. And at first I wanted him to be wearing some like really cool baggy clothing. And I was trying to go for something like this. I just think this looks really cool. And I got this which I thought it was okay, but then I thought maybe I don't wanna go this direction. I think I wanted to go with a little bit of an ominous feel and an ominous look. So I think this thing that kind of looks like a lab outfit just fits better the aesthetic that I was going for. So hopefully these images kind of give you an idea of what I was going for. I wanted this person to have like glass hands with like water in it. And you can see that that's kind of what I was going for here but it's a little bit too bright. The clothing is a little bit too formal. So I was just iterating until I got to this point right here. And I thought, this is it. This is what I want. I like the fog. 
I like how the hand looks. I love how the rest of the body looks. This is more in line of what I had in mind, something a little bit more mysterious. But yeah, I still felt like the angles were a little bit boring, so I try to make it a little bit interesting. I told the agent that I wanted some more dynamic angles and it was kind of getting it, but still not there until finally it gave me this. And I thought this, this is what I want. This is what I'm trying to go for. Very interesting angles, different positions. And I, this is what I wanted, but I didn't want it to be a human. So I told the agent in frame six, can you remove this person and have the clothing cover the neck? And it gave me this and this was perfect. Then of course I went through the process that I went through with the last video and this is what I got, which is fine, right? I still think it's interesting. However, I wanted to try <laughs> having a little bit of movement in there. So again, I told it that I wanted the person to be dancing and doing a little bit more interesting movements and also added a backflip. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. This is after the iteration, what I got. Way more interesting, right? Of course, you don't have to do this for every single generation. I just thought I just wanted this specifically for sh showcasing to you. Very cool. And then it loops again. So that's the great thing about agents that you can iterate, right? You can tell it, Hey, I don't like that. Can you change that? Let's try something a little different. And then it's going to do that for you, right? Of course it spends more credits. So you got to be just aware of that, but still you have the ability to shape something the way you want it to look. So go ahead and try this out for yourself. So that's how the multi angle fashion agent works a quick and easy process that was only possible because of the agent automating so many parts to make this a fun and not tedious experience. We have many more tutorials coming your way. So subscribe to stay up to date with the latest AI models and techniques until next time. Take care.